Terry's going to have his swallow test tomorrow, and if he passes it. So thank you all for joining us for the workshop tonight. As you can see, we have a pretty full agenda, and so I guess we'll jump into it. Uh, the first topic is uh, Watkins Jet Rail Safety Concern that Jeff Cuthbertson would like to present. All right, thank you, Wayne. Um, thank you for having me this evening. My name is Jeff Cuthbertson. Um, I, uh, I am the owner of Surpro here in, in Collegedale. Um, and we, just a little background about myself. I've uh, been, um, I've owned Surpro for 12 years. And we clean up after fires and floods and, and disasters and so forth. Many of you probably know that. Um, a couple years ago, we made the decision to, to relocate to Collegedale this time permanently. And we, we built a, a pretty large facility on Jet Rail Drive. Um, and that was two years ago. Uh, and we were really happy we did that. We really like where we're at. Um, we've been very blessed, very fortunate to be able to grow. We're now investing in a, another facility at the intersection of Jet Rail and Watkins. Uh, and you've probably seen that building going up. Um, like I said, we we have been very fortunate to be able to grow. We employ um, about 75 people now, and um, we recently expanded into into Knoxville as well. And we're looking at another location as we speak, or at this uh, as we speak. Um, we have some concerns over uh, just having one point of access to Jet Rail Drive. And, and it revolves around safety concerns. Um, there, are several, on several occasions, there'll be trains that stop um, out on the tracks, and sometimes they stop for upwards of an hour. And it, and when this happened most recently, um, you know, the thought occurred to me that with just one point of access. Uh, this is a real concern from a safety standpoint. You know, if someone, um, 
if there were to be a true emergency, you know, if someone were to have a heart attack or were to have a stroke or something like that, uh, or we were to have a fire or, or something of that nature, that the access would be restricted. And, um, and then also with there not being a gate um, over the Watkins or going over the, the railroad tracks, that's, that's also a concern. So our, I guess our ask is that um, we can, that you consider putting a second access uh, to Watkins. And uh, I think the most, most logical, or, you know, the most logical place to do that would be from, from Titus Lane. Um, and that would just, that would help uh, with the safety. And uh, so that's, that's what I'm here to talk about. Okay. So we've looked into this going back, I guess about two years. Um, mm -hmm. We spoke to TDOT about it. Uh, TDOT would, would be fine with converting Titus to a, a public street. Um, at the end of the day, it comes down to uh, cost and effort to complete the project. Um, property would have to be acquired to make the connection, and then the road would have to be constructed. Um, right now, um, until we know what the COVID relief funds are going to do, uh, it would be very challenging to find it in this upcoming budget. I do think we should probably stay in, in contact as we find out what those COVID numbers do. Assuming the commission wants to go down this road and have this conversation. Um, there is additional acreage owned by the Wittenbergs adjacent to Surfpro. Um, so especially if that property started to develop, the demand on that one crossing would go up significantly. Um, so then I'll also open it up to the commission for any feedback or thoughts. I do. If you can, you move the screen up, up the other way, right? Go up a little bit more. All right, right there. That big piece of property right there that has the two warehouses on it. Mm -hmm. um, is that a possibility to run the length of that over to Watkins? So. That would be a similar situation of acquiring the property and building the public street. Uh, the Wittenbergs do own the parcel in the northwest corner. There is a large creek at the end of, of Watkins that would have to be crossed. Um, I believe it's in the flood plain, not the flood way off the top of my head. Um, that would be an option as well. I would expect it to be equally as well received by TDOT. Um, it, it would really come down to what property owners are we working with? Which ones can we um, come to an acceptable agreement uh, to do it? And, and the creek crossing. What's the heaviest truck you have over there? I know you've got the box trucks, but. Uh, the box trucks are the heaviest. Well, we have 53 foot trailers. Uh, we don't own the tractors that, that pull them. Uh, but the heaviest trucks we have are the, are the box trucks. Is uh, the trailers, I, I'm just thinking, could we do a culvert like we did off Prospect Church? I don't know the weightage, what they would support and compare to Something the, like Prospect Church Road would be absolutely adequate from a, a structural perspective. Okay. Um, those were not cheap. Um, and th this crossing probably wouldn't be to that same extent, but it would still be significant. Um, I, I think we need to look at <clears throat> potentially uh, what we could do and then with uh, the funds that's going to be available to us. Okay. With the recovery funds. Where does it come out? I'll ask you. Yeah, because uh, I drove back there to look and, and I checked things out when you were first building the new mm -hmm. facility there. And I know that that was a concern at that time too uh, about coming over the, and I almost got taken out just sitting there looking. Uh, as a was an 18 wheeler that came through at the time that I uh, was there. I've been there a few times. But my concern is uh, right here, the neighbors, the people that own the property there. I know that that little community right there, a lot of them have been in that, or their families have been in that area for 100 years. Mm -hmm. So are we looking at, are, are you looking at seeing if you can purchase the land from them? Are we looking at uh, an easement? 
So when we looked at this two-ish years ago, I guess it was when it was originally raised, um, the properties were up for sale. I don't they know. They were up for sale. They were then. I don't know if they are now. They may not. Yeah. They may have been pulled off the market. Some of them are. Um, either way, to make a public street, it would have to be publicly dedicated right of way, not mm -hmm. an easement. So the property would have to be acquired and, and yeah. deeded to the city. Okay. So where where does Titus come out on Little Ringo? It's you know where the all yeah. state is. I it's right there. Yeah. Right but across, not too not too far. The original road, the road storage. Road storage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it it's before you get to the railroad track. Before you right get to the, the old daycare. Baptist church. Right across the daycare. Yes. I don't. I don't want to miss or speak out of turn here. Um, I've spoken with Ray Esslinger, mm -hmm. who I think represents the Wittenbergs, and he. I don't know who an, who owns which pieces of property. I think he owns the, the Wittenbergs own the farm and some land there, and he indicated that they would be willing to work with College Dale. I don't know exactly what that means, but I think right. he's uh, <clears throat> willing to work with with everyone on it. I think he's worked with this before, hasn't he? In the past, Properties they've for been the ball fields um, and things. Pretty reasonable. We did we did have to eminent domain the additional pump station property, but the whole process was yeah. as civil as you could have ever imagined that process being. So. Well, I think it's something we certainly need to work towards. Yeah. I think it's something that's important to your organization, your employees and everything over there. So I, I hope that we will not drop this ball. I hope we'll continue to work towards finding a solution. Awesome. Have you talked to the railroad about putting a crossing arm in there? No, sir, we haven't. I don't know. I don't remember. I think it's a requirement if the school buses goes across it. I don't know the age, if there are kids down there. They're, they're very still. Now. I think most of them have moved out by now. But mm -hmm. uh, What I'm looking at, too, I know that when I come all the way down, uh, when I was checking, I know uh, adjacent, there's... Um, I don't want to say adjacent, but there was like they were cleaning some roadway out or some forestry out. It looked like they were trying to make a road or something there. Is that your property or is that the Wittenberg's property? It's on the same side as your facility, but it's past like coming down towards Titus. Titus doesn't go all the way through. No, it doesn't. You're talking about recently where they're clearing that out? Yeah. That is not our property. Um, I asked Ray, and I think he said that's where like a cell phone tower is going. That, yes. oh. there, there's the cell phone tower right going there. in mm -hmm. off of Watkins. Mm -hmm. I can see where there's a knee because people are trapped back there in case of the road. I understand that because I live mm -hmm. on this side of it. Um, my concern was just the properties right there, that uh, how that would impact the families that are currently living on Titus. Right. You know, from an employer perspective, we are we are constantly asking our people to come to a complete stop at the railroads to be careful. And we only have so much control over that. <laughs> so yeah. we, we're looking at their safety as well as, you know, everyone else in the, in the industrial park. Any more discussion? Was that in part of the original plans to, to expand or to have a road when they first built the new facility about was, adding that road? It wasn't at that time. Okay. Okay, thank you. Well, we, we appreciate uh, just letting us come and talk to you about it. If there's anything that we can do to facilitate things or to you know help things move along just let us know but we we appreciate just any consideration so thank you very much thank you next on the agenda is a report on the debt obligation i'm going to ask michelle to cover this for us so this is the final step for the refunding of the four million dollar bond um i simply have to present you with this and then let the state know that I did, and then we're we're all set. This is the bond we voted on a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and we've been, it takes months. It's it's a months on the process, but this is the final step. Okay. 
and they actually dropped the interest rate. It was 3.95, they dropped it to 1.95, and now they dropped it again to 1.8. So how much would we be saving? We'd be saving close to $500,000. Oh, that's a good. Yeah. So you just have to present it because we can't vote on it. Okay. Yeah, no voting is necessary. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Michelle. Next on the agenda is the Veterans Park, Veterans Memorial Park Monument sign by Commissioner Garver. Thank you. Oh, this is nice. Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't bring it, but I have one. Do you need it to give to somebody else? Okay. What really prompted this is uh, the fact that a lot of my friends who have people come in from out of town, um, when they get to their destination, they say, hey, did you see anything out the four corners of Veterans for now? Um, and it is one of the unique gems of our community. Um, we've been working on signage of different places and different kinds for years and years and years. Uh, we have got some things out on the interstate, finally. Um, but some of the people on our veterans board, the Veterans Park Board, have actually believed that it would be a nice time. Uh, this is our 20th anniversary of our Veterans Park. 20 years ago, I guess last week we had our first board meeting and started that whole process. And so I think the board is preparing to uh, uh, pass those responsibilities on in some form or another. But we'd like to have a monument sign out there. Um, each of you has a picture of one. I guess it would have been nice if I'd had one given to somebody to get on the screen. I didn't know we'd have a screen up today so the people in the room could see it as well. Um, it'll match, the construction would match exactly like the common sign. Um, other than having the Collegedale seal on it, it would actually have the United States seal in brass, the United States seal in brass on both sides. And it was, it's already been approved by the individual who does have approval uh, powers over anything that goes on that big field. That's already been taken care of. Um, it's, it's, I think, a very attractive sign, a nice thing to let people passing through college deal realize there's something behind the little strip mall. Um, so, because it, it really isn't that visible if you don't know there's something back here to look at. So this would help us get more people looking at that. And I think along with this, there's a lot of people hoping that we'll get some parking up front that we talked about. We actually funded, I think, two years ago, but things happened and it was not possible to do that. So uh, I think there's some other plans possibly going on there as well. So this proposal for this location is more towards the strip mall area. So it won't ever have to be someone think it's in the way or bothersome or creating some kind of a, a hazard visually or physically for the things that go on out there in the field. So uh, the price tag for this is on the second page and uh, the Veterans Memorial Park Board has requested I present this as a request. Um, we have already uh, have a bronze female to be placed out in the park. We're looking at Memorial Day for doing that. Um, 
but it's going to be a very, very nice addition to the park as well. So it'd be nice to have <clears throat> the dedication for this new bronze sculpture out there. And sometime around that time, actually have a nice new monument sign to actually direct people to the park. Uh, so we would like to get some help with this. Um, Amount of sixteen thousand four twenty three is the completed the completed price tag for the monument sign, and uh, after looking around, uh, it it seemed like a very legitimate and reasonable price. So that's what I brought for today for a little discussion. If you have any questions or comments, um, I know we're in the, towards the end of a fiscal year and looking at the budget for next year. Um, I think I think the feeling of the board and our treasurer especially is that uh, we could split this into both fiscal years if necessary from the city if you're so if you so desire. So I'll entertain questions or comments if you have any. I have a couple. Mm -hmm. um, Good. Do you have a plan for lighting? No, um, there's lights around there, and we actually felt like the price tag on lighting would actually be <laughs> uh, something that we probably wouldn't want to undertake at this time, even though we didn't get pricing. Um, the thought was with several people that, um, I mean, it's nice. The common sign is lit. And it's very nice to see that at night. But there are other lights around the, the little strip mall. And so we have not included lighting in this price. So. Um, yeah, I think lighting would be great. And I think a, a sign is needed. Uh, my other observation comment mm -hmm. is um, as the city grows and, and, and whatnot, how does this, uh, and this is for the rest of the board and city staff, um, how does this sign conform to our branding standards and or future branding standards as we go to replace and, and add new signage throughout the city. We've got several different types. And I think this has nothing to do with your sign or against or oh. for It's a bigger conversation sure. of rebranding what College Dale looks like and from a planning standpoint, how that will help in um, recruitment and and brand recognition. Well, the short answer to that is branding is essential right now. I think the city needs a brand. It's needed a brand for quite a while. And I think that is one of the, the lower bases of the pyramid, if you will. And signage is certainly a part of that. That's one way that the brand is communicated. Um, as far as how this would fit into that, um, I think you know, the way I can address that is I think the common sign has already um, sort of set a tone um, for, you know, city branding in the future as far as identifying city facilities. Um, I know we need a sign at the EDC. We have for, for four years. Um, and one of the ideas that we have is to have a monument, a version of a monument sign like this, but monument signs aren't appropriate everywhere. This one, I think it obviously would be, but for other facilities have, um, you know, a column of stone with a, you know, a, a, an arm sign, if you will, um, that has the same design elements as these monument signs do for consistency so that we do have a brand. That's how you do brand. You, you create your brand once it's agreed on and then you, you're consistent with it. Um, so how this goes, and I think this is a great looking sign, but as far as the larger conversation, we haven't had that, um, how this might fit in it. But I think branding is essential to answer your question. Yeah, and I love the fact that it looks so much <clears throat> like the commons. Um, yeah, it's, it's a gorgeous sign and, and definitely needed because to identify where the Veterans Park is with that plaza there. You actually are past it, and then you have to turn back and look to see where the, the flags are. So, but I, I just, as we're adding signage and, and we're moving down that direction, I want to make sure that we have a starting point and an end goal of how the brand looks for the city of Collegedale and what that is going to be moving forward. We, so we've had those discussions, nothing is on paper and, and it may be that this is on paper right here as far as you know that like i said with the commons to, to as a jumping off point um we haven't so solidified anything i think that would be 
ideal to be able to do that. Um, also, if there's talk of illumination with the parking that is being discussed, um, that could possibly be a part of that design. I, you know, instead of eliminating uh, the possibility of illumination right now, um, I would I'd say give, give that just a little bit of time to flesh out might be a worth the wait. I think lighting that sign would be a huge <clears throat> blessing to <laughs> make it pop even more. But thank you, Kelly. I, I just, uh, before we start adding signs everywhere, I want to make sure we have a consistent theme that we're branding towards. So, so I that, shared Garver, I'm very supportive of what you're, what you guys are doing there. And I think that was our desire was it would complement the sign that's already here. And we actually think that a sign like this would really go great over Thatcher switch recreation area. Um, and that would identify it as part of the college Dale rec activity center. I mean, event park park rather than wondering, you know, this little sign and, up there that they have. So, you know, well, including this sign and moving forward, I strongly recommend that, that we adopt a signage plan, a signage program. It doesn't mean that all these signs are obligated to be funded right here in, in, in you know, the next few months after that's completed. But I do strongly recommend that rather than this piecemeal approach. And um, just for the consistency sake and, and that brand, um, we keep going back to how important branding is and signing is a very, very important part of that. Um, so I, I do strongly recommend that the commission um, consider a, a sign program, if you will. We, we've already had internal conversations and that's something that would not take you know, two weeks to, to, to combine after a few conversations and some looking at some things. Cause I think we're already well on our way. We just want to make sure we don't stray from that. Um, so that what's consistent here is consistent in the future. And then we don't kind of get off track of, of that, of that message. So I think this would be great coming into every major intersection <clears throat> in the city of College Dale. Yeah. Boudoir Ringo Road, Epsom Pike, Lee Highway side. Um, I think that we do need a brand, if you will, and this sign looks great. I feel I, I give you kudos for this and the team for bit coming up with this. I, I personally like to see it lit. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's a thousand, two thousand. I mean, to me, it's an eye catching and that's what we really want the park to be to grab somebody's attention. So I don't know. Have you tried to raise any money that maybe you could pay for the lighting maybe, or no, we, we we just got this back two weeks ago and we start said, well, let's start here yeah, and uh, see where it goes. But uh, yeah, I, no, I haven't. I, I just think it'd be great to go ahead and do it all at once to, mm -hmm. to get it over with. Because I think that as people did. drive through, they can see it and catches their attention. It's, there's one thing that we've all discovered, I think, particularly in planning. I know way in has on the engineering side is it's so much cheaper to incorporate that into the front yeah. end of the design versus right. trying to retrofit yeah. anything. Right. Yeah. Um, and by that, you know, by that token, I mean that if we're if we can nail down our potential parking that will help maybe make those decisions a little easier and a little more um you know clear cut where where that can be accommodated on the front end now the timetable on that is still to be determined but i don't see it's not indefinite but i do see um the park the decisions on the parking um coming to a close pretty soon and that we would know what we could accommodate there on the front end or just absolutely make sure that it's built into the front end so that it can be illuminated yeah. We can certainly do the underground work around it, and make that work, and tie into it later if need be. So, Kelly, would it be reasonable at the next workshop for planning to present uh, kind of a, a city signage plan? I think that's reasonable to do because a lot of that has already been discussed, and that just needs to be put on paper. And really, I think the challenge now is uh, to be able to operate within sort of a framework so that once you have your basic design set that you can have a couple of variations to meet those circumstances because we certainly don't need a monument sign everywhere in the city but we do need a sign that is of the same quality and of the same design family if you will so i think that's the next stage of it and i think that's entirely reasonable we we wouldn't have to wait till that happens to do this would we no not for this. Uh, the only thing that I would add is just maybe to see where the uh, parking lot discussion goes in the next two weeks. Okay. Well, I think a couple of us could go out there and look, and I don't think this will even be a part of that problem. Well, to be able to, to be right. included with illumination easier on the front right. end. Is right. Okay. Right. And not to have redundant signs 50 feet apart right. as part of that. 
Um, and it's so over, in theory, they could go ahead and order the sign if they felt like they should. Placement would be to come to follow. Is that correct? Well, it's over ten thousand, so it'd have to be bid out if the city's paying for it. But it's not a city project. I mean, we, we could donate the money. This is definitely an arm's length from the city. It's not a city organ. Yes. The only yes. way we can donate the money is if their total budget would be over forty nine thousand dollars a year. Otherwise, it'd still have to be bid out because it'd be more than one third. Is your total budget more than more than forty nine or fifty thousand dollars a year? Well, the sixteen thousand um, is the total your budget. organization. Oh, the organization budget. Yeah. Yeah, we raise about eight ten thousand a year for flags. So, so it'd still have to be bid out if it was city funding over ten thousand and more than one third of your annual budget. Yeah. Yeah, it probably would be. Right. So we'd, we'd still have to bid it out. and. But now this year it wouldn't be because we got the, the the bronze nurse was 60000 so, so I mean, so then if it was part of our, this year's budget, it wouldn't That's the money we've out. raised. What? Right. I mean, that's this fiscal year. We've raised right. over 60000 for that. Right. So... You apply the the math to that; it seems like it. That it would work. be closer to working, yes. Um, Plus the flags on top of the bronze. Right. So, I think. Yeah. What's your timeline on this before the end of the fiscal year? So June. Well, as soon as possible. I mean, there's no life or death thing going on here, right. um, but it'd be nice to have it as soon as possible, um, especially with the celebration this summer coming up, it'd be nice, but that's the next fiscal year. Um, I would just like to coordinate with the, the plan that planning is putting together. If we're talking about a month or so, if that's not a deal breaker for you, uh, oh, no. that way this could be an input into that plan and, and all of it could be cohesive. When you ask, you go along with the giver, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean uh, yes, sir. Thank you for your time. I think uh, the people who've seen this all think it's a very mm -hmm. appropriate and quality for our community and for the park both. So okay. the bronze plaque out there will really, really set it off nice. It's a great looking sign. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. So okay. next is- May I ask him a one? question, Scott? Do you know the uh, status of renaming a section of Appleson Pike? Has the state made any? So that right now is in the works. Um, it, can I clarify something? Yes. It won't be renaming at all. No, I'm just okay. Saying, okay. Yes, it's, a, it's a plaque it's, put there right. for a portion okay. of. Yeah, if it's somebody Appleson may Pike. misinterpret that. Yeah, It'll still be Appleson Pike all the way. Dedicating a portion of Appleson Pike to be Veterans Memorial. Drive. Um, that is currently in the state house, I believe. I've spoken with, um, I have to pull up on my phone to remember exactly which representatives. I know it was a lady from Mike Carter's office. And then I think also um, Mike's illness on that. another representative, because it had to go through both the House yeah. and the Senate. And so we're speaking with one of the representatives in the Senate. And it is on schedule to be added to the amendment to the omnibus bill which is what dedicates those certain portions within the state. Okay. So it's on track. Um, I spoke with her last month and she said we should know something about April, May-ish. Thank you. That's going to be a very nice addition too, I think. Okay. So next on the agenda is the July Freedom Celebration. And so I wanted to open this conversation up to the commission for discussion. It, it appears that... Uh, by 4th of July, the CDC will not have released all guidance and, and gone to a no holds barred, but we'll probably be out of a mask mandate and that sort of thing. So the fee to cancel the fireworks is $20,250. The total to shoot the fireworks show is $27,000. We've already paid $13,500 as a deposit uh, in January of 2020. And then last year we paid $4,050 to postpone the, the shooting. So 
in, in my mind, we have kind of three situations. One would be to completely cancel it, pay the $20,000 and, and move on. One would be to go back to what we've done in years past, um, a very large show of that general nature. And then the third would be kind of a hybrid that we still shot the fireworks, but we worked with uh, Chris Thomas and College Del Tomorrow Foundation for them to host something at the Commons and we would provide uh, policing, um, but nothing really more than that, so that it's more of a uh, College Del Tomorrow Foundation programming and we're just providing the fireworks and the police. And so I was wanting to kind of gain some consens consensus on the commission's thoughts. Well, I think we've been shut down, beat up, and through the ringer here for so long that if it's possible for us to open it up, and I, I fully believe that a reduced uh, experience prior to the fireworks, but yet a still healthy event would be a nice thing. I think from what I heard you say, it would everything be over, be over here until the fireworks started. And I, and I would just say it'd be nice to have something going on over here, even though it might just be a lot less magnitude. I don't know. I can imagine families not spreading out right. in the park. Right. Um, I hate to see us not to have it another year. Um, I like the hybrid mm -hmm. suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. But uh, I think we need to have some fireworks. I agree. So I think you're going to have people over there regardless of what happens. If they know we're shooting too. fireworks, you're going to have a field full of people. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like initially when I heard that, and should we have vendors in the middle of Epson Pike yeah. selling stuff? Maybe we could do it without that. But then people's going to get hot and thirsty and kids expect it. Um, I'm for the full-blown thing. Wide open? Wide open. So the idea with the hybrid show would be that the vendors would be on Swinier and Absent Pike would remain open and then people would use the underpass to access the field because, yes, they would go over there anyhow. Yeah. And I'm assuming, Eric, you would still kind of chart off the fields? If I, we... I think it would have to, yeah. Just having it out there in a holds bar would be very difficult for – emergency service to get in there. Um, yeah. It makes it somewhat organized. People can find their families. They can say, hey, I'm over here versus I'm in field three. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is helpful to have it broken apart. Very helpful. That's very and I'm, I'm good with it. The vendors being over here um, have no problems with that. So, will, will there be signage to direct people over to Swinier? or a, a marketing campaign to let them know of the hybrid? Whatever's format. determined, we'll have to figure out how to execute. So if we choose to go that route, yes, we would we would need to have signage and, and flyers and that sort of thing to logistically pull it off. We've had pretty good communication with the city website and police website mm -hmm. about parking and directional of travel. Mm -hmm. I think I think some people will just stay at home just because they're comfortable. Some people are going to go out. Hopefully, it won't be a Miami like it was over the weekend with spring break. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think people we've always had very respectable, you know, fireworks shows and stuff like that. Best and I just feel like our citizens are going to want it. Yeah, I agree. Well, as of April 5, any adult can have their vaccine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that gives them two months to have quite a few more yeah. individuals vaccinated, which will be increase our safety too. So you're going to bring this back to our meeting on? I, I can. Um, just to get direction on which way you want or if to you guys want to put together what you think would work I, I just hate to take away from the overall experience has always been pretty right. and I, I get what we're mm -hmm. trying to do on this side with you know that's where the bands are maybe that's where the orchestra is right I think that is where 
Yeah. Oh, did we have some bands over there year before last still? We, we have, and uh, if we went with the hybrid, we probably would not. Um, the real question on the hybrid approach is, do we leave Appleton Pike open or closed? Uh, if we leave it open, uh, what do we do to calm traffic and slow it? Uh, and that sort of thing. But you're going to have to be able to escort people back and forth across there for the fireworks. I mean, that's, but I think that can be done without closing it, I think. Right. Have three or four places where you. And maybe, maybe we allow traffic to flow with the presence of the police department out there. But, yeah. you know, like during the fireworks show, we shut everything down for the hour, how long it takes for people to get in and out and leave. Mm -hmm. I think it's doable. Keep the fireworks going. Could, okay. could you do uh, <laughs> screens and and um, sound system that would live stream what's going on over here for the people that are over there to kind of help allow the spreading of the populace? Anything's possible. It's just time what? and money, right? right? Yeah. How much okay. money do you uh, want to pay know. for it? It, it was expensive last time we <laughs> yes, did the screen. It was, right. it was very yeah. expensive. When, one when, screen. when Ricky Skaggs was here, it was thirty thousand yeah. dollars. I'm sure it's gone up since then. It's, so it's I'd probably slow. lean against that. Um, but. And we've had complaints in the past from people in the field not wanting the music. So having music on one area and not on the other area could potentially let people pick what they want to do. Um, I, I do agree from a safety standpoint. I do think that at some point we would have to shut apps and pipe down, whether it be 10, 20 minutes, an hour before the fireworks, just because when it's over, you're not going to clear that field out under the bridge. Right. Um, but it's all very doable. They'll be running across the street. <clears throat> So I'm, I'm hearing a, a slightly dialed back, but closer to normal fireworks program. I think so from my, my perspective. And I think if people, is there some way we can let people know no programming over here, that they won't come out there at two o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> expecting music right. and roast for the next eight hours. Uh, if, if they're aware of what's going on, I think you would make it very, very doable. Okay. And maybe we dial back the start time of it. That would probably be part of it to condense it down in conjunction with the programming and, and try to get as much into a, a limited amount of time that is logistically easier. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea we got to do it. And what date did you discuss having this data? I believe it's the second, but that's off the top of my head. Or the first? Is it? It's Thursday the first. What day of the week? Thursday, Thursday the first. The first. <clears throat> Is that when the fireworks guy can be here? That's the tentative date, yes. Any more discussion? All right. So Next item on the agenda is the parking on Swinyard Drive. Uh, this is in relation to uh, the proposed uh, gift of a park. Uh, I guess the, the contention is the back end parking along Swinyard Drive. The uh, from starting about two years ago, we worked with the donor and uh, we, the city insisted that parking need to be provided for the park to be functional. We investigated multiple alternatives, including um, parking at the commons, which did not work out, putting a parking lot inside the field, uh, which was, uh, didn't meet the donor's vision to take a few acres of an open space park for parking. Um, they, they were not receptive to building the parking across the creek because they donated the property after the city agreed to build the parking over the creek. Uh, so we, we settled on on-street parking. Uh, this approach is safe. It is used. It's state of practice. Uh, it will not reduce the travel lanes, which will remain at three on Swinier Drive and, and would function uh, by using the back-end parking that allows for vehicles to unload onto a sidewalk from the rear of their vehicle. And then there would be uh, protected crosswalks for people to cross from the west side over to the park. So... So we have a group of people here, I'm sure, are objecting to the parking. 
Yes. I think that in the next meeting on April 5th, they can get up and share their concerns again. We've yes. received quite, or I have at least, mm -hmm. yeah. received quite a few emails. You know, I think the park will be great. And two concerns is parking and safety for the kids. And mm -hmm. I get it. But we know that futuristic, there's going to be building across the street where that parking is, which is just going to, there's nothing we can do to stop it at this point. It, mm -hmm. it is a, somebody owns the land, they're going to develop it, and it's mm -hmm. going to be either commercial or real estate uh, apartments mm -hmm. or something. It's just a given fact the way society is today. Is that correct? Yes. And every conversation we've had with them, uh, their site plans included on street parking as well. So and even if we didn't do the park, if they develop this through a real, st real estate deal, there would be parking there regardless. That's that's their plans. What about what was the objection of, of going ahead and putting the Developing the parking along Udawa Ringo Road because we're going to need that anyway for the 4th of July. That property was donated to the city after the city agreed to build the parking. And so the, the donor felt like it was inappropriate for the city to come back after we had agreed to do it and ask us and ask them to build the parking. Additionally, it wouldn't be very functional with the distance from the playground and restrooms to the parking. Well, where is the bridge going to be built? Does, can't there be two bridges? Uh, the uh, Putting a second bridge in would be difficult on how it affects the floodway. We're currently going through a Clomar right now due to the flooding caused by the abutments for the first bridge. And we're needing that additional upstream area for that water to spread. Um, even if you had a second bridge, it would still be a significant walk from the that side of the creek over to the restrooms and, and playground. What Mid about the structure of sidewalks? <clears throat> Pardon? The sidewalks, they, are they going to be behind the cars? Or are they going to be backing in? Correct. But it's going all the way down to the church street where the church, you turn off to go to the church? Leland, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll tie into the sidewalks at Leland. All the way, way down to Four Corners Place? Yes. Is that the name of it? It, it would connect all the sidewalks. So for clarification with the vice mayor, the land the vice mayor was talking about, that's the commercial property that's between it is written and Swinger Drive. That's correct? what I understood. Yes. So that's going to be developed. There's on-street parking going there, whether it's this year or five years from now, depending on what the developer wants to do because it's private property. Correct. That, that's what's proposed. Okay. So regardless of what we decide, on-street parking is happening on Swinger Drive because of the development that's happening in the city of College Dale, because of private property owners taking yes. advantage of the growth of the city. Yes, and where the road was originally put in left a narrow remnant, and then with your buffers off of the creek as required by TDEC, uh, that's where they're forced to put it. Okay. So currently, that parking is not gonna be part of this project. It would be part of this project. Uh, the donor has worked for the last 18 months with that developer to secure the donations and go through all of the legal channels oh, okay. to be able to donate the parking as a part of this park. So okay. where we had in thought we could do like a dirt <laughs> parking lot, now it has to be an official parking lot. So, so if the only parking we did was over there, it would no longer function as an overflow area. It would be only parking. It would be an asphalt jungle, yes. So we're talking maybe a million dollars or probably three to four hundred thousand. It depends on how bad the underlying soils are and how much we have to undercut. Would it have would it have to be um, uh, asphalt or could we do it some way in which there could be permit uh, permeating uh, the water? We we could do a reinforced sod type parking uh, there is more maintenance with those type products um, but they do exist wouldn't that be more environmentally sound they usually are it's just the additional cost to construct and maintain and you would still have to have driveway places or or that wouldn't hold up i think as much as moisture is over there where I you drive the in day. yeah it's pretty wet it's, yeah, it it's very wet. Um, and what, then you're still a significant distance from the restrooms and playground. What about when they widen Udwa Ringo Road? How much of that property will be taken with the widening? So the current plan for the widening will be 
three lanes uh, with a verge, the width of which is not nailed down, and then a 12 foot shared use path. So guesstimating, probably 40-ish feet on the front edge of the property would be taken, which will get questionable on how much room exists then between the power lines and the, yeah. the shared use path. Because there's not much space there. Really. Any more discussion? So I would encourage y'all to come on the 5th of April um, we do appreciate your feedback you have been sending us. Um, concerns about the kids is another issue they had. I mean, we haven't had any issues here at our park, um, Imagination Station so far that I'm aware of. Um, but doesn't mean it hasn't happened. I just don't know about it. Um, I can see kids running, darting in and out of between cars, crossing, you know, from the west side to the other side of Swinger Drive. So we, we definitely need to look at what we can do as a city. I like the crosswalks. I think it needs to be lit some way for safety. There will be street lights installed. Okay, right. okay good. Because like, one like, thing too, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, one thing too, uh, in, 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 and I'm concerned about safety, but also a lot of this has to do with parental control. Mm -hmm. You know, but I know even the best parental control uh, a child can get away, <laughs> you know, but still there's, there's some things that the parents, we can, we can instill some safety rules or something like that. But, um, I definitely like to see what we can do safety wise, you know, to ensure. <laughs> Maybe we can get chief sap to give us some feedback as well, on his thoughts and, okay. you know, Eric goes to public work meetings. I'm sure he's got some thoughts as well. So. With the crosswalk, there'll be a light to uh, for them to um, indicate, like we have up on the campus at Southern. I'm not sure off the top of my head if they were the push button or if they were just standard crosswalks. Okay, because um, even with those uh, lighted crosswalks, with students can push the button to indicate that they're going to move out. They walk in and out anywhere across yes, there, and do. so you have to be so careful with them. Mm -hmm. They're on their phones, and they don't watch where they're going. But hopefully these will be kids with their parents. Yeah. <laughs> College kids are interesting. I do think... <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I love the them. Have the <laughs> I do have one other, one other point that's definitely related, in my opinion, because I use it a lot. Um, Leland Drive mm -hmm. is a great option other than turning left out of Leland onto Ultra Ringo is a total disaster. Um, to me, one of the greatest things we could do to show that community that they are valued is to put a stoplight there so is that whenever they feel a need or traffic is heavy somewhere, that they do have an Ex, a, a separate exit available to them, similar to what we were talking about today, where they know they can get out. There are some days I'll wait for two or three minutes to get out of Bill Reed Road, and I can see both directions. There you can't see both directions. And it's a, it's, and the older I get, <laughs> the more difficult it gets. So to me, maybe some of the best money we can spend is to give an option for these folks who we, I mean, I, every email I've gotten, I've appreciated, but that would actually be an alternative that I think um, that they would embrace. And I know I would go on and coming out of there. When church lets out, I mean, it's just a challenge to go left, especially. You know, and, we, you and I did talk about this. We and, did, and I spoke with T. Dot about it. Yeah. And so T. Dot is the it's, it's a state yeah. thing. It's yeah. a it state thing. State. I know that. So we'd have to have an engineering study, if I'm not mistaken. Is that so? T. Dot's currently in the their design phase of improving Udall Ringgold Road. So right. they are not going to do anything right during okay. that phase until it's complete. 
So we would be solely responsible for all engineering, all design, all construction costs, and all permitting. Um, that would, using the Edgman Road as an example, even without the delays, is five to six years and a million dollars. How much? How about Spalding? About a million dollars. How about the one on campus at Spalding, the light we put there three years ago? That was done by us, and that was just the light with, without the studies, and that was uh, 150 ish. That was 125,000, and we used all the equipment that came off of Little Debbie Parkway. Right. So we already had our own equipment. Yeah. yeah, we already had our own equipment. Yeah. So if we did the whole thing, it'd be. I was using the Edgman example because you would be site distance limited, so they would make you do some improvements to get the site distance to work, and that would that was north of a million dollars. Edgman at Lee Highway. If it needs site work done, why, the, why, aren't we, why aren't we doing the site work? I mean, money, I understand. And they do have an option now to go the other way. So, I mean, anyway, I think it's, I think it's something we really legitimately need to take a peek at. And there may be some donors who'd like to contribute to that. Um, who knows? Anyway, to me, that's a real option that I think would help a lot with this unrest mm -hmm. about some of the unknowns about this because i think the unknowns are what's really mm -hmm. one i'll make one comment that is when people start the what if stuff mm -hmm. to me it's just it's going down a road that could never end and we can what if stuff to death and i i really like to look at the things we know and the things that we can deal with um even though the what ifs could come into play, no doubt about it. But to base decision totally on what if is a little challenging for me to do. Uh, I'd rather have data. And I've collected some, and I may share that at our next, what did you say, the next yeah. commission meeting? April 5th. April 5th. April 5th, okay. So that's not a workshop. So the last item on the agenda is the city manager requirements, and I'll turn it over to the vice mayor. Yeah, so question came up uh, before the uh, last meeting or at the last meeting about does the city manager have to live inside the city limits? In the April, I mean, the November 19th, 2001 minutes, it was moved and second that the city manager had to live here. It gave them time to find, you know, a place to live. So um, I think some of the questions was, do, with the housing shortage, do we want to look at waiving that, if I'm not mistaken? Is that correct? Yeah, and, and my, my point was that even though it was voted in that meeting, it was specific to that job posting, not our general requirement by the city, which was reconfirmed by seeing those minutes. It was just a requirement per that job posting. And my concern is right now, to put somebody in the city of College Dell in the next six months to a year, they're gonna be spending half a million dollars if they can even get an offer accepted in Barnsley Park. Uh, we're at 323 homes in our entire market in Hamilton County, and that's from $5,000 up to $8 million. 323 homes active on the market, and they're selling within hours with $40,000 over asking price guaranteed over appraised value. So <laughs> trying to have a job market or re requiring somebody to live in such a smaller condensed area, I think even in the city of college though, we're looking at 15 homes on the market that are new builds like lots that, that that's not even built out houses yet. Uh, built out, you're looking at maybe a couple. So that's uh, uh, just something we need to be cognizant of when we require people to um, move here is that moving here is a really hard thing to do right now. And we're not seeing any slowdown. Um, prices are, are increasing day over day without um, a sign of it slowing down unless the interest rates shoot through the roof. That's the only thing that's gonna slow this market down right now. But we're dealing with a lot of cash buyers too, so. And, and I would, I would, uh, I certainly understand the shortage and the price tags. I mean, I've got friends who are looking and they're <laughs> devastated basically mm -hmm. by what they're finding. Um, I don't, I really don't think we should 
just open it up, find a place wherever the crud you want to. I really believe I would prefer letting them know how it has been or something about how we feel about this. Because I think most of these people would really want to live in the city and experience the tax increases or decreases <laughs> or whatever's going on rather than ruling from afar like I'm the king from who knows where. Um, I walk, I drive into work and, and then I drive out of work. So I think there's some personal interest in being a part of a community that is of value other than being mandated. Um, but just to open it carte blanche, I, I don't know if there's another way to do it, but to me, I really see a, a tremendous value in our city manager actually being a part of the community that they're managing. So, so to it's the, a challenge, I know. To the point about the taxes, I've been thinking a lot about that. The city manager recommends we're the ones who actually right. said it, so they wouldn't be ruling from afar. That's up to us who actually live in the city to dictate those taxes. But so, they would be experiencing it regardless. Uh, right. They'd be experiencing it, and they'd understand firsthand. Yeah, I know what you're going through. If from Bradley County, they would not be able to say Oh, that. no, I, I think they would have to live in Hamilton County. I think that's a requirement. Well, then why would that change? I mean, Can I interject anyway. something here? quickly um, I don't I understand both points I really do and and, and to be realistic uh, I like the fact of being in the community and so forth like uh, Commissioner Garner said but if we're going to require the city manager to live within our city then we're going to have to up his salary <laughs> yeah big time you know because you're going to look at the cost of living rate before even to entice somebody to come here they're going to look at, okay, I may be offered $200,000 a year. What's going to cost me to live there? Am I really improving my lifestyle? Am I really getting, you know, being able to help quality? I mean, we all do that when we look at promotions and transferring and so forth. So I think there has to be a you know, happy medium here. If you're going to offer somebody who isn't here and require for them to be here, then you're going to have to give them a substantial raise so that they can afford those house payments. And, and I understand fully what uh, uh, Commissioner Watt is saying because I've been trying to look in the area based on a teacher. So, and I lived here for over 20 years now, trying to find a place that my husband and I can afford in our retirement. And I can't do that right now because I can afford a three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar home based on my salary. You know, as a teacher, and I make pretty good as a teacher. But I think the housing allowance concept is a legitimate yeah. one. Yeah, and you know something. Not the salary increase. But a housing allowance concept, there's a lot of organizations that do housing allowances like car allowances, and like they work diem? out very, very nicely. What? Like per diem? No, 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 no. You, you, you talk, they make a deal or whatever, and then they get a percentage of that as a housing allowance. Um, it becomes taxable after one year. It might even become taxable immediately. I'm not sure about the taxability stuff of it. But anyway, I, I'd prefer it tied to that. Is it something similar to what you're referring to? I, I deal with automotive. Is it something like that? I cause uh, What I'm thinking of is like when, when Jefferson worked, part of his salary was, yeah, we got a demo and he got an allowance. But we had to pay taxes on it. It was part of because it was part of his income. Okay. And then what? Um, it didn't show. It's so like one year there was one place in North Carolina because they tax everything. But um it had to go back to the uh, what we need to the city or the owners. dealership owner. He had to pay taxes on it because some a new structure that they had started, a new policy that had come in. So it, somebody's going to have to pay the taxes one so, way or the other. We're going to have the city pay the taxes on it, or we're going to have the individual, just like I have to pay mine. So, so when I worked contract, I was paid a housing allowance through per diem, mm -hmm. and that that was what I used to secure an apartment. Yeah. And for the first year, it's tax free um, for both parties. And then after it's a year and a day, it becomes taxed as ordinary income for both parties. Okay, that's what I was thinking. It was yeah. Well, no, I, I think we need to just look and make sure in Tennessee if it's still legal to do something like this. Um, I mean, we can definitely talk about it as we go through this process, mm -hmm. but we need to have some uh, so, so if we knowledge if, of it to, mm -hmm. to make sure if we do subsidize. Then the question comes in, is the city manager actually experiencing a tax increase because he's being subsidized to live here with the tax increase that he is therefore putting forward? So 
because it's it is tax dollars at that point. So I, I would be a little hesitant to go down that route. Um, but what if they rent the, the amount of money? Like, I mean, rent. There's, I mean, they're going to be in the apartment complex. But what I'm saying, if you give a housing allowance, what if they rent? Is that your intent? Say what? If you're giving them a housing allowance to live within the city, would it be your intent that they would be allowed to go rent an apartment? Sure. If that's what they want to okay. live. And then at that point, they're not subsidized. They're not subject to the tax increase. Well, that's not the only issue with living in the city is the taxation process. I mean, that's just one of the examples that people always bring up. Oh, yeah. When this was, so, go ahead, Mayor. When this was passed by the uh, commission, did it then become, uh, was there, um, would we have to do a resolution to change that? It wasn't a resolution or no. I didn't think yeah, it, it was, but I didn't know if it was part of the. That particular um, situation at that time. Okay. But just from a professional standpoint, I mean, I'm having, I mean, there's some Southern Evidence University professors that are looking at some, like, I'm blown away by the amount of money that we're having to spend to get them into a housing situation because their housing's running out. So, oh, really? um, and, and six, if, I mean, it used to be the, the housing market would have a spectrum of like 250 to $400,000 was hot. We're seeing even pushing a million dollars is hot with cash buyers. I mean, the one we just got beat out on was $600,000 four offers, we were had escalation clauses, willing to pay over appraised value, and we still lost. So that's the kind of environment that we're in right now. Um, and as potential candidates are looking here, if they look at what is in the city limits, there's just nothing to, to live there. They're gonna be forced to live in an apartment for at least a year. So that, that, that's the only reason why I'm hesitant on that, just from a professional standpoint. So I have nothing else at this moment except for us all to think on it. I mean, I know that Jim and Fred years ago had a good heart to do it because they wanted city employees to move here and live here. Even back in 2001, part of the argument was people couldn't afford it. Uh, although taxes were lower than, you know, a lot of the cities, you know, salaries were not enough because the housing in College Dale was still expensive back then. So I think we were shot down by uh, legal on that and the cost of, you know, people moving here. If they moved here and they lived here two years or three years and they got fired in the third year, what does that do? You know, mm -hmm. some risk. So. Okay. Any more discussion? Good discussion. So, so we'll go uh, with uh, the commissioner's reports. We'll start with uh, Ethan. Uh, there's nothing tonight for me. Commissioner Garber. Nothing. Thank you. Commissioner Baker. No, I think everything's been covered. Vice Mayor Johnson. No, I think I've got my interview. Or is it Betsy we talked to this week? Okay. Yeah. Oh, what is mine? Is well, that Tuesday? Yes. Yeah. So I, I actually sent Hannah the Thursday and Friday. Friday yeah. I sent her okay, my I'm supposed to do Thursday. questions I'd like to see asked during the interview. So I sent that today. And so is it here at City Hall? I take it. I can't remember. You know, I thought it was a Zoom, but I think that somebody let me know that they're coming here. Okay. They're coming yeah. here. I think mine is at three o'clock, if I'm correct. I've got mine written down. Well, yeah, tell Kristen to check and, and make sure because they were, they gave me two. They okay. tried to book me for Friday and I told them I could not do Friday morning. Come on, I think mine's at one on Thursday. You know, that, uh, sure. I'm thinking it's three. I think mine's Thursday at three. Uh -oh. well, I'm, I'm checking right now. Mine's Friday at 10. Mine's Thursday at 9.30. Well, I know it was in the afternoon. And they were supposed to get back with well, me to confirm it, though, and I didn't I'll get a confirmation. You know. Yeah, I'm Thursday from 3 to 4. You're from 3 to 4? Yeah. Okay. But how long are they going to be here? Long as necessary. And this is just to really talk about what we'd like to see in the city manager and what's important to us. And yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Because the, the last message I got was, was 3 okay, and I said, yeah, I can make it for 3. Was that on Wednesday, though? 
No, oh. I couldn't do Wednesday because I'm booked all day Wednesday. <laughs> I might be able to do three on Wednesday. They're not here on Wednesday. But they're not here, but Thursday. I can still do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm booked. I'm booked. Maybe this is the end of the year and have a lot of meetings with parents and stuff, but uh, between medical and jiggling with, with CJ with and her. not with CJ, with Crash and <laughs> Jeff. So, but I thought it was three o'clock. It's what I wrote down on my calendar at school. I'll let Chris, I'll tell her to text you tomorrow. Okay, and tell her if it needs to be, if they're here to four, I can be here at four or three thirty. That's okay. your job. Three to four. That's your job to tell her when you can come. Come on. You know, that's, you know, don't tell in the afternoon. Mayor Lamb. Did uh, Hannah send you guys questions that yeah. they have? You got copies of those? Okay. Because if you didn't, I was going to forward them on to you. forward me one? Um, An evaluation. Yeah. Okay. I filled a thing out. Likert but scale, Likert scale. Yeah. You need to trash that Likert scale. It's got five. Yeah. I probably, she, five I probably got it saved at my work. And I will preach Why on you that. Why you want it to go to 10? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, I think it like the, three, the like only thing I was going to tell everybody, and, and I said something that. about it earlier, is that uh, you might want to put this on our website, too, that beginning in April 5, all adults can receive vaccinations for the COVID. April. Came from the governor's office today. That's good. Just I got the schedule. Okay. Schedule okay. The so yeah. Chief Sapp is sick today. Uh, he has been working diligently on procedure revisions and was going to give you packets today. Uh, we'll pass those out at our next meeting. Um, and so then, Michelle? I don't have anything today. Okay. Chris? Bridget? Uh, quickly, I think uh, a lot of y'all may have gotten a chance to watch the TML legislative conference last Monday. Uh, in it, they said there were over 1,600 bills filed. And out of those 1,600 this year, over 665 could potentially affect municipalities. One that I have mentioned previously that I may need your help with is our Senator Garden hires bill on abatement of stormwater fees. Um, he's holding strong to that. There has been an amendment um, exempting 501 C3s. We're also very concerned about that when I spoke with Wayne about it. Um, we are going to, I'll be working closely with TML and TCMA, and they're going to try to, um, if nothing else, recommend that it goes before TASR for discussion to try to diffuse it. And also tomorrow it goes before the House Agricultural and Natural Resources Subcommittee. So we're going to keep a close eye on that. And I have a list of talking points from TML. So I may be sending you an email and asking your help and reaching out to either Senator Gardenhire or the other legislators to help get this, hopefully, uh, a bill passed or bill, excuse me, bill stopped because it could be very detrimental to the cities. Andrew? Nothing new to report. Eric? Yes. I um, wanted to or let you guys know that we've been having a parking issue on Sanborn Drive in front of our public, public works building. And then also the fire department has been having issues as well. We've put um, no parking signs in our parking lot and they've asked us to help them with signs for their parking lot. Um, basically, we're having a lot of people that come down there to use the bike trails. Um, shortly after they opened their newest trail, they closed the parking lot that Southern used to have over there. So we're having a lot more traffic. Uh, I spoke with Wayne about it. And we're going to put up some signs basically saying no parking anytime at the fire halls and then at public works no parking during the hours that we're there that way people on the weekends could potentially park there but at the fire hall they can't park there at any time because there needs to be emergency traffic availability um, also later this week we're having our pre-bid meeting for our sewer force main replacement project and um, we're going to basically answer any questions that contractors may have and get a feel for how many people might bid on that project. And hopefully we'll get several good responses next month and get that project started. Eric, what are they going to do about Tucker Road? So Wright Brothers right now, um, they're putting together a plan to reinforce the bridge that's there by Thatcher Switch. 
and they it's middle to T dot. I haven't heard whether T dot has approved that or not, but the plan is to reinforce that bridge and divert truck traffic the other direction off of Tucker Road and then fix the torn up areas on Tucker Road. It is a mess. Yeah, it, I drove that this weekend, and it, mm -hmm. it you know, I'm glad you said it because I'm the, usually one that jumps on Eric about it and calls him. I mean, it's all the way down to the sharp curve before you get into Land of Drive. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how bad it is. Yes. I mean, and I, I honestly think they have to pay the whole entire stretch because it's it's beat up pretty bad with those trucks. Right. Yeah, when they when they bring a repair repair plan to us as far as what they plan on doing, I'll bring it to Wayne and let you guys know okay. what they're what they're what they're proposing and what we may require them to do. That's all. <coughs> Kelly? Uh, nothing that hasn't already been covered. Um, what we're doing is looking at branding signage and we're also looking at um, potential corridor studies we discussed and we'll be hearing more about that later. Um, basically, have some pipe that already exists, have some pipe that will exist. Okay. Christine? Yeah, just a few things. I um, want to give a shout out to our volunteers that showed up yesterday to help clean up uh, veterans' work. Uh, there was a lot of debris, natural debris, that was on some of the structures there. And um, yeah, was, uh, we had spoke with Public uh, Works and they needed a little help with getting that taken care of. So um, a few of us got out there and got that cleaned up yesterday, so that was great. And hopefully, we'll be able to start doing more of a monthly or quarterly park cleanup, um, trying to get the community more involved. Um, also, we have on Wednesday, we have a tree and shrub giveaway. Uh, we were going to do a planting um, for the tree day, but unfortunately, the weather is not looking uh, well for us on Thursday, so we decided we need to get those seedlings out and in the ground. And thanks to um, Kirsten, we've been able to get that planned out, so we'll be doing uh, giveaway on Wednesday at 4 o'clock at the Commons, and we've got um, 100, 100 seedlings. So it'll be a first come, first serve, but hopefully, we can get, um, get them all handed out in the family. And then, of course, um, we're still trying to get more people involved in pickleball. Um, and so we've got four clinics coming up two this month and two next month. And I know I've only got three more spots for this month. Next month is already starting to fill up, so we're getting a big push for more pickleball courts. Also, <laughs> okay. And my seedlings, they're, they're about this tall. They're not, they're, not yeah, they're, they're, they're probably about like this. So. What kind are they? There's blueberry uh, bushes, there's some red flies, red and some pecans. Yeah. Hmm. Nice. So the people who get pecans need to. They need to, so they can pollinate. Oh, yeah. Quick question. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, there was a lot of discussion about timing. I'm just curious. When are we going to try to come to a conclusion about the price of the or payment for the sign for the Veterans Park? I thought we were going to bring the the city signage okay. forward ne next workshop, and then we would okay. just bring okay. it up to the following okay. commission okay. meeting. So it'll be at least five or six weeks. Okay. Give or take. Do you Eric. need a copy of this sign? Uh, if you have a digital copy, I can take that or a copy. You showed it to me, but I would like to have one of for as we sketch out something. Okay. Eric, along since we had the heavy rain along Little Debbie Parkway from uh, Oli Highway, there is lots and lots of trash that has come up from the creek. Yes, uh, we had a crew out there today cleaning that up. Okay, fantastic. Christy? All right, we're going to be having our shredding event April 20th from 3 to 6 p.m. What time? 3 to 6 p.m. April 20th. That will be on the website. There's a sign. I usually put it in the um, Wednesday little flyer paper. Anything else? Adjourn. <laughs> I got that.